Are you blessed? Amen. Well, my little wife said angelic. You know what? You sounded angelic this morning. I thought we sounded really, really well. Amen. I think it went well. I think it, God was pleased with that. You know, God wants to hear our voices. Do you believe that today? God only didn't want to hear, doesn't only want us to talk to him. He would love for us to sing to him also. Amen. Because you know what? We need to thank God that we have the air and we have the breath to be able to talk to him and to be able to sing to him. Amen. Well, God is on the throne. Amen. And God does know what he's doing. You know, I've preached many times about how God does know what he's doing, but we know that, don't we? But who believes this? We have parables and we have stories in the Bible that tells us even how to live for him. See, God just doesn't say, live for me, go figure it out. It's kind of like faith. Here's your little faith, and now do something with it instead of saying, find you some faith and do something with it. Well, I want to speak this morning on unproductive, and then I'm going to teach tonight on productive. The reason I want to do it in this order is, is because I believe the unproductive part is still a little bit loose in the church, in other words. I believe that we still have ends here that we're trying to put together. Amen. I don't want us to be puzzled or in mystery of what is not in my life that's right with God so that I can be productive. Now, let me ask the church something this morning. Do you want to be productive in your spiritual life? We want to be productive really in anything we do, I hope. Anything that we do that's, that's, that's of God or of just life in general, we want to be productive, don't we? We want to stay employed for God, don't we? We want to stay on the production line. We want to stay on the producing side of that. You know, guys, let's talk about gardening for a little bit, which I know nothing about, but I know that my God does. Amen. And I know that he's taught me things out of the Bible. Let's talk about the soil. Let's talk about the dirt. Now, we have to cultivate that, correct? We have to churn it. We have to rototill it. We have to kind of turn that over. Do you know why that is? What are we doing there? We are preparing it, and we are, if there's anything bad or weak in there, it mixes it, and it gets it out of there, and it gets it ready. Sister Sue told me this one time, didn't back in the old, old days, didn't they farm for like six years in a row, and then they would take a year off? You know why they did that? You know why, Sister Barbara? They would let the land kind of heal. Because, see, every year, in other words, they was continuously cultivating, planting, picking, shucking, planting. And, okay, it's like our Christian life. What do we do on the seventh day? We rest and we rejuvenate. How? Good point, huh? That's what they would do with the land. I've seen farmers working their land this morning. They don't do that no more. They work every day. They work every single day. Well, back in them old days, back in the old biblical days, that land could heal. It could, it could have a rest. Who believes today that God gives us this day not only to serve him, but for rest? Amen? Rest from what? Well, how about rest? You remember before Sunday school this morning, I said, has anybody had a hectic week besides me? I think every hand went up. Okay, we need rest. If it was hard labor, if it was uh, hard work, if it was dealing with family, if it was dealing with friends, and boy, we have done a lot of that. Amen? So in saying that this morning, we're going to cultivate today we're going to cultivate our soils. We are going to rototill our lives. We are going to turn things around. And I want to go to Mark first this morning. Do you have your Bibles with you? Go to Mark 4. I would like you to go to Mark 4, 4, and 5. Mark 4, 4, and 5 in the New Testament, of course. And I want to read something to you there this morning. And if you will notice, it will be in red letters, which means what? Jesus said that. And boy, 
I don't know about you. The whole Bible is important, but when it's in red, it just feels a little bit more important. What do you think? And I don't mean that disgracefully. I just say that Jesus said that. Well, you know, a lot of these words in the Bible, the Lord give men to write that. But I love when you get to the red part. And it's up here on the screen if you would like to look at this morning. We're going to read it right there out of the King James. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air come and devoured up. Now, leave it right there for a minute. We've got to talk about that. What does that mean this morning? We, as children of God, we sow seeds. Amen? But if we do not put it in the right place, at the right time, in the right area, I don't want the birds or, let's say, enemies in this situation. I don't want the enemies of the world to come and devour it. Hey, reminds me of them promise books we leave. Okay, thank you, Lord, for just giving me this. Boy, my little wife, she lays them promise books out. I'm telling you, we buy them things by the cases. We buy so many of them the other day, we put them on back order, amen? That's how many we buy. And she'll put these books out. And uh, so many times we'll see a person pick that up, and man, boy, they like that. The other day, she had laid one on the windshield of a vehicle, somewhere where we was at. Well, they was about from here, the door away from us. When we all got out together, we're walking. He seen that book. He went and laid it on the table. He didn't want it. But here's what I'm saying. Now, he was an enemy of God. Okay? But now, he wasn't a real bad enemy. Why? He could have thrown it away. He could have thrown it on the ground. He could have thrown it in a mud puddle. It was hard to see because we knew that he didn't want it. But he laid that there little to know that somebody else was going to pick it up that was going to enjoy that. So I thanked God for that. I'd like seeing him keep it. But I was just thankful that he went up, and he didn't do this either. He went up and he laid it down. Nice. Well, he, he, he robbed his own blessings. Because, see, and little, this is the cool part. Little does he know, the next person that picked that book up, it could have been changed their entire life. I mean, the God could have struck that person and really got a hold of them. But that man missed a blessing. Now, he wasted it for himself. Now, here's what I want to relate to on some of these seeds. When we're delivering these books, or when we're dropping these little seeds along the way, guys, be careful that you put them in the right place. Put them in a place where you know that they can get used. That would be like us giving them books out, and that would be like us going into a restaurant and going into the bathroom, open the cupboard, and put it in there. You follow what I'm saying? You've got to lay them out. You've got to lay them out where they can be seen. Okay, let's use this for an example. You put it in the cupboard underneath the sink in a bathroom in just, say, a restaurant. Well, either the janitor is just going to think of something and throw it away, or the rats are going to chew it up. It's going to get wasted. More than likely, it's going to get wasted. What's that next verse say, Sister Vi? Mark 4, 5 says this. She warned me earlier she was slow. I believe it, don't you? I'm proud of her. She's doing good. And some fell on stony ground. What's stony ground? Mm-hmm. Where it had not much earth. Hard. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth in earth. Now, now, now. Let's stop right here and think about something. If it fell on stony ground and it didn't have much dirt, how did it immediately spring up? Because there was no depth of the earth. How could it do that? Exactly. But what happens in just a little while? It dies out. Amen. Do you know why? Because there was not enough soil there. There was not enough cultivation there. In other words, it growed real quick because it had, like Brother Gerald said, it didn't have 
far to go, you might say. It didn't have much crush to break through. But see, some on stony ground. I believe sometimes us Christians throw our seeds on stony ground. Instead of putting it into the good soil. My friends this morning, that's unproductive. You don't want to be unproductive, do you? You want to be productive for God. Now, this is Jesus speaking because it had no depth of the earth. Now, let me get into this a little bit because you need to understand what I'm talking about here this morning. When that seed is scattered across the field, some of the seed fell on the footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Well, that was good for the birds. But you know what? The birds don't have a spirit. It's something that God made, and yes, they need to eat, but Jesus is trying to give us an example right here. Don't worry about feeding them birds. Them birds, the Lord will take care of them birds. I haven't got to say this in a long time. When's the last time you've seen a skinny bird? I ain't talking about his legs either. I'm talking about that little fat body, them little big skinny legs hold up, right? You hardly ever see a dead bird. Sometimes. The Lord will take care of that. Now, my point here this morning is, I believe sometimes we're unproductive in life, although we think we're productive. We're going to give some of the seed to the bird or to the enemy because we think it's okay. No, it's not okay. God says he wants us to be productive, which we are going to speak about tonight. But unproductive is something that God does not and will not allow. Amen. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. Let's take a flat rock and let's lay it up here this morning and let's sprinkle some soil on top of it, okay? Just sprinkle some soil on top of it and you drop you a few little seeds right there. As Brother Gerald said, it wouldn't be long, right? But it wouldn't be long either if we go, why? There's no foundation. See, here's my point I'm getting to this morning. To have a foundation in Jesus Christ, you've got to have your soil correct. You've got to be fertilized. You've got to be fertile. You've got to be rototilled. How many of you ever been rototilled in life? Huh? Churned and run over and, and, and smashed and rolled and churned. We've been there, haven't we? But does it make us a better person? Yes, it does. See, guys, we have to go through things to see things. We have to go through problems to testify. We have to run through things in life to understand what God has for each and every one of us. Amen? God wants you to be productive. Amen? Well, If we take this rock and we scatter this soil and we run these seeds in there, that's pretty cool today. But I can grant you more than likely by the time we come back on Tuesday night, next time we come back, they'd already be dead because there was nothing there. That's what's going on in the Christian realm today. There's too many Christians dying because their soil is too thin. Underneath them is rock. Listen to this. But it's not the right rock. Amen. See, our cornerstone, Sister Debbie, is Jesus Christ. It's not a stone. It's not a piece of rock. It's that cornerstone. And some of you is probably thinking, well, he don't have dirt on top of him. No, because he is the cornerstone. He's already sprouted. He's already where he needs to be. See, I don't want dirt in my life. Now, spiritual soil I will take because I want my seeds to flourish. I want my seeds to be something. Amen? God's so good, isn't he? This parable didn't only help the disciples. This parable didn't help everybody back in that time. 
This parable has helped me. This parable, I hope today, is going to help you to see what God has for you to do. Do you believe, do you agree with me today that so many Christians are standing on shallow soil? They're not standing on the rock of Jesus. They're standing on, reminds me of the beach. How many has stood on the beach where the water comes up and then goes back? You stand in one spot. Have you stood there for a little while? What happens? Yeah, and you start getting kind of wobbly. And it keeps washing out from under you. But now you can back up. Am I right, Brother Gerald? Back on up and get away from that water line and stand there. Pretty good. But walk forward. Oh, come on now. Trying to use this as a, as a crutch here this morning. Here we are. Here's the water line right here. We're good. Everything sounds good. Before long, you're going to be all wobbly. What do we do? We need to come back to where we first begun. We need to come back to our first love. We need to come back to the foundation of Jesus. We need to come back to the soil that God is trying to tell us to do. Amen? Well, pastor, I don't know how to do that. I really don't know why. Because the Bible tells you how to do things. The Bible is our instruction book. Amen? Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. How true is that? Basic instructions. I love it because we must have instructions in life, especially spiritually. Why do we go to Sunday school? Why do we come to church? Why do we come to Bible studies? Why? To learn. How do we learn? But when you come to church, when you come to Sunday school, when you come to Bible study, guys, you must listen. You must pay attention. You must be alert. It's hard to learn, right, Sister Barbara, and take it in. We, You're right. You're right. You can't just come and listen. You have to do that. But you're right, Sister Barbara. You need to... How about being a sponge? Yep. Well, there's nothing like a spiritual sponge. Well, Pastor, I don't remember everything that was taught about today. Well, maybe I don't either. But see, I do know this. If you come to church, Sunday school, open Bible study with an open heart, open mind, and a teachable spirit, God is going to fill you. And when you leave this place, God's going to have in you what he wanted you to hear and what he wants you to use. That's why we must do reruns. Have you ever heard eat, sleep, work, repeat? Eat, sleep, work, repeat. Well, this is church. Church, word, God, repeat. Church, word, God, repeat. That's how you do it. See, we can't just come every once in a while and expect to be productive. Well, I know. You're getting bored this morning, aren't you? But I know one thing. God said to bring this message, and that's what you're getting. He knew that most of them would not produce fruit from changed lives. You know, we talk about that in church quite often. When you see somebody first saved, they're all excited, huh? They're all excited and they're pumped up. They got the Holy Spirit and boy, they're hooping and hollering and doing this and doing that. And you can watch them dwindle. Something's wrong there. Amen? Something wrong is going on in their life. You know, he was teaching them disciples. He was teaching all them people of what they have to do with their seeds. You know, I believe a lot of Christians today waste too much time with some seeds. Oh, boy. Let me get myself out of this one, right? Now, listen carefully. When God tells us to spread that seed, I truly believe that God says, you put them seeds down, you be the witness you need to be, you be the person that you need to be, you be the example you need to be. But, guys, I think we need to keep moving. Now, why am I saying that, Brother Ricky? Because sometimes people will 
Some people will, will try to destruct you. Some people will try to distraught you. And I think God is saying, keep moving. That's the point I'm coming to. Some of you is thinking, now doesn't a seed need water? Well, let me tell you something, guys. You don't make it rain. God does. And let me tell you something else this morning, guys. God says, I will water the seeds. Don't worry about that. I believe that's how a lot of people get hung up and they get stuck in a rut. Does anybody in here today know a Christian that's stuck in a rut? Okay, why are they stuck in a rut? I just give you one example. Sometimes we're, watch me, watch me. We're putting these seeds out, and then sometimes we go, we stop for a while. Somebody's telling us, well, you remember we talked about the birds earlier? That's also the enemies. The Lord was using birds as something to come and pick it up, but the way he was using these birds was these birds was coming and stealing that seed that was meant to be good. But you can't blame the bird because a bird is a bird, and when it sees a seed, it wants it. It's hungry. But if the person, if the disciple, if you, if I would put them seeds in the right place, the enemy cannot destroy that. God's good. I tell you. But see, unproductive. Here is our spiritual parallel I'd like to tell you this morning. We cultivate. We get our hearts ready. We prepare to receive the seed of God's word. Now, did you know that? You got to receive the seeds of of the God of the word of God before you can distribute them. Amen. Are you with me? We got to receive the seeds. I want you to have seeds that you can distribute. We can continue to cultivate the heart, allowing the word to grow and thrive. I want to explain this morning about three different types of hearts. There's a hard heart. There's a shallow heart, and there is a crowded heart. Now, in saying that, Sister Vi, can you put verse number four up there again, please? Uh, the last one was the crowded heart. The hard heart I want to talk about now, and we're going to go back to verse four, and I want you to look at something right here. What is a hard heart? Well, does anybody know a hard-hearted person? We probably all do, don't we? What's that mean? Mean, ugly, cruel, ornery, rude, whatever. That's a hard heart. I think a hard heart has costed a many person's life. Okay? And it came to pass he sowed some fell by the well side, wayside, and the fowls of the air come and devoured it up. Well, that's a hard heart because it's a hard head. Amen? Not listening, just not listening. The hard heart, verse 4, means resist the word of God and makes it easy for Satan. The birds are used here to snatch it away. Now I want to talk about the shallow heart. We need to see verses number 5 and 6, if you don't mind, Sister Bye. I want to talk now about a shallow heart. This heart is like this soil on a rock. You know, we talked about the thin soil. Do you remember that, guys? Well, thin soil, whatever is planted, cannot last because it cannot be rooted in. That's where I come up with the shallow heart. Do you know any people that claims they're Christians, but they have a shallow heart? We do, don't we? We know a lot of people that has a hard heart. Amen. We know a lot of people that has a shallow heart. Now, would I be wrong to say this? Do we have hard hearts and shallow hearts in the churches today? Am I wrong to say that? 
Because why? Because it's true. You know, sometimes we as pastors, Brother Scotty, we get knocked for saying things like this. You shouldn't say there's hard hearts in the church. You shouldn't say that there's shallow hearts in the church. Well, I believe we have to speak the truth. I'm not pointing you out saying you have a hard heart. I'm not pointing you out and saying you have a shallow heart. And I'm not saying only this church. I'm saying churches. But see, that offends some people. You know why? That's right, Sister Barbara, because they know. So guess what? Let our uh, offense be made by God. Amen? The shallow heart, verses 5 and 6. Let's read 5, and then we're going to read 6, okay? And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately... It sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Hold it right there just a second. Does that remind you? Have you ever seen a person do that? I've seen people come to church, okay, that's never been in this church, and I've seen them be here for the first 15 minutes and tell me this is their church, that they will be back. And I'm thinking, you haven't been here long enough to even see if you like this church. Besides that, I don't even know if you've met my wife yet, right? You knew that was coming, right? <laughs> I had to wake him up. Hey, baby, I had to wake him up. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we can't use Sister Vi all the time. I got to pick on you too, amen? <laughs> How are you, Brother Albert? How are you, man? <laughs> but am I right? Man, this is my church. I like it here. What do you like, the pictures, the flowers? I don't know. How do you even know you like it? You've only been here 15 minutes. I told them a minute ago they hadn't even met Sister Sue yet. What are you talking about you're going to stay around here for, right? You get a gut feeling. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. It's a shallow heart. See, they walk in. Ah, oh, pretty little country church. Look at all these smiling people. Look at all these smiling people. Yeah, I like it here, Brother Joe. Man, this looks like my church. But see, they're shallow. It happens in all churches. Am I right? The next verse. Huh? Then you never see them again. Then you never see them again. How come? Okay, we're getting to the point. See, we're talking about shallow dirt. Remember, Brother Gerald? They can break right through that crust. Man, I like it here. This is cool here. This is country, man. I like everybody here. It's so nice to me. Everybody hug me. Church of a thousand hugs. Yes, but it's shallow. You can't get nowhere in life. Now, let's go back to the part where we said, look, but when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Well, that's what's happening to the churches today. The churches are withering away today. You know, there's churches closing down. There is churches right here in Orange, Texas. I know this for a fact that does not have a pastor. I know that for a fact right here in this town. What do they do? They still go there at 10 o'clock. They do the best they can with Sunday schools. They probably got their Sunday school teachers they've had forever. But when it comes to 11 o'clock, I asked a guy the other day, I said, what do you do at 11 o'clock? You follow me? I can see getting through Sunday school, and I can see getting through greeting people, and I can see getting up to 11 o'clock. What do you do at 11 o'clock, brother? Well, sometimes a pastor will show up, and what if he don't? Well, we just kind of talk. Well, what are they talking about? Are they going to have a Bible study or are they going to talk about their griping because they don't have a pastor? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? See, guys, that's shallow ground. Something's wrong with that picture. Why did I say that? Because it goes with this. You see, if you don't have root, 
if you don't have soil in a church, here's what happens. It will wither away. And if you don't know what that word means, I'll just go ahead and tell it to you like this. You're going to die. You're going to be scorched. Didn't the sun say, didn't the word say that the sun would scorch you? Who likes to stand outside when it's a hundred degrees and just stand there and say, Oh, it feels so good out here today. <gasps> Who likes to do that? Because you're going to scorch. You're going to start melting. Now, don't give me no water. I'm tough. I can make it all day out here. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll see how long you make it out here, right? This represents the emotional hearer. Does anybody know anybody like that? The emotional hearer. Does anybody know someone like that? They joyfully accept God's word. Oh, listen to this, guys. But they don't really understand the price that it takes to live up to the word. They don't realize what it is to become a genuine Christian. Last but not least, the crowded heart. Verse number seven, Sister Vi. What is a crowded heart? What does crowded mean, guys? Do you know what crowded means? Mess. mess. That's a good word, Brother Joe. There's too much other mess. Now, let's go back to spiritual gardens, okay? How about thorns? My wife asked me the other day, she said, have you ever noticed there are certain parts of the yard Gabby don't walk in? She said, I finally figured it out. Well, I didn't know. I said, well, what is it? And she said the other day she had to carry her. She didn't want to walk. And then I noticed one day up against our house, instead of walking out in the grass, she walked right beside the house because I keep it weed-eated and, you know, it was just dirt. And, man, she stayed right there, and I thought, now what in the world is she doing? She figured, you see them little thorns? There were stickers out in that grass, and they was poking her, and they was poking her and tickling her belly. In saying that, my friends, if you come up to a part in life that's got thorns in it and you see it, you're just not going to walk through that, I wouldn't think. I would think you would go, and you would try to go around it. See, even Gabby had enough sense to do that. What's wrong with us sometimes? Sometimes, you ready? Sometimes here's what we do, right? Because our mind is other place. We're not even thinking where we're at. And then we're going, you're halfway in the middle now. What do you do? You know what we do, Brother Scotty? Oh, God, help me again. Oh, God, I promise if you'll help me this one time, just one more time, right? Never do it again. Oh, boy. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. Do you know a Christian that does not yield any fruit? Most of them look like a lemon tree. Throw me a lemon and I'll make some lemonade, right? The thorns grew up and choked it. I tell you what, I have looked out. I don't know about you, Sister Sue, and you, Pastor Scotty. Sometimes you can look out at the congregation, and it looks like some of the people is being choked. Spiritually, they're being choked by the devil. And sad to say, some of them never figured out. I talked with someone this morning trying to save their soul, right? Trying to witness, trying to do all I could do to make them become a Christian and realize what God had for them. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. What do we have to do with that, Sister Vi? Just do it. That's exactly what I told him. You know, I believe God is getting tired of, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I'm better than they are. How about this one? This coming week. 
Well, now there's just something about that month of June. When I when it gets into June, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, what June? Are you a June bug or are you talking June this year? I don't know what you're talking about, but what Monday? I'm gonna get saved Monday. What Monday? Even if it is tomorrow. Could be too late. See, I'm trying. Next week, Thursday's my day. No, I got to wait till June. There's just, just something I want to do it in June. That's nothing but excuses. I don't know about you this morning, but I feel that God is getting tired of excuses. And I do know this, and I'm very, very, very proud to say this today, as I've been saying for the last week or two. We have no excuses. You know, we are going to serve God with all we have in us. And yes, I know you look around and I know you don't see many people here today. But guys, I tell you, the word tells me that when he comes back, he's coming after his remnant. Because see, are you glad you're in the remnant? Please come back tonight. Please come back tonight. This is kind of a negative preaching this morning I'm giving you, but it's to learn you something, and it's to pump you up, it's to build you up for tonight's service of productive. See, unproductive is negative. Productive is positive. And I really don't like talking about negative, but I have to talk this way this morning to get you built up for what's coming tonight. Because God is getting weary and God says you know I'm coming soon and God says I really do love you I really really do I really really want you up here with me boy pastor Scotty stepped all over my stuff this morning but you know as we always say confirmation is wonderful it is it's wonderful the crowded heart what is crowded heart? Well, it's the person who acts like they know the word, but they don't live the word. The hearer has too many different kinds of seeds growing in the soil. What do I mean by that? Worldly cares, a desire for riches, a lust for things. I, 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 first thing you thought of was sex, didn't you? You wasn't even thinking. But you know what? That's what most people think when they hear the word lust. What can lust be used for? You know what I think is just as you know what I think is just as popular as sex with the word lust? Money. Money, money, money. It it might be more. Because see, it's the lust lusts of the world that has destroyed so many people. Am I right? Let's see. Can I say this or not? No, I better not. Well, I don't know if that's the right word to use is what I was going to say. Okay, let me let me go ahead and say it. Then. I don't know if this is right or I don't know if this is right or not, but let me say this. You know, we lust for so many things in the world. It could be money. It could be girls. It could be guys. It could be cars. Hey, I used to be there. Man, if it was a car, buddy, that's me. Of course, car still is my life under God. But what I'm trying to say is I would spend all I had to get what I wanted for a car. Well, see, God's done showed me better than that now. So there's we've all had lust of some type in our life, okay? Can we have the lust for God? Okay, that's the word I didn't know if I could use because that word has always been negative sounding. But then again, I got a negative sermon this morning, so let's just finish it off negative, right? Am I right? Let's, huh? Intimate relationship. How about this, Sister Sue? Intimate desire. You get my point. If we thought as much of God and of the word, as we have of some of the things that we have in the past, I tell you what, 
All of you would already be standing up shouting hallelujah this morning. Do you know why? Because remember, you used to shout, you used to holler. I don't know if it was a ball game. I don't know if it was a race. I don't know if it was a card game. I don't know what it was. But you have, yeah, bingo. You have hooped. You had hollered, right? Now, listen to me, Brother Ricky. I'm serious. I can remember the time that we would go to baseball games, and when we got out of that place, we couldn't even talk. Why? Uh Uh-huh. Drag racing, same thing. Dipper hollering for your favorite ones and all that. And I think back and... I think back now, and I said, oh, my gosh, why can't I holler for God like that now? So I'm going to start trying that, Brother Albert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. God's good, isn't he? Hey, I'm a positive person, so I'm cutting this off right now. I'm tired of speaking negative this morning, but you needed it. You know what? We needed it. Please come back tonight. I guarantee you, all of you will smile bigger tonight. Amen? Before we close this morning, I do want to, Sister Sue has a big, large announcement she would like to make. And then tonight, I'm going to basically say the announcement that she said this morning because there would be some more people here that's not here this morning, okay? Uh, matter of fact, you can be seated for a minute. If you don't mind, go ahead and be seated. I just wanted you to get up and make sure your legs still worked, okay? I did hear a lot of pop. You guys sound like a bunch hey, you guys sound like a bunch of rice krispies this morning. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. I'm gonna end my sermon this morning with this.